Hello and welcome to the 1% Club Podcast. My name is Nick Lugo and I'm your host. My goal is to bring you the top 1% of a bunch of different professions and for a bunch of different character traits. I want to make sure that all the people that I bring on this podcast are high quality and I want to find out what they did to get into the top 1% of whatever it is that they are. My guest is Mike Chabala. Mike Chabala is an entrepreneur who owns his own company called Sphere Club and he also is an MLS soccer player. So I want to figure out what he did on this podcast to be so passionate about what he does, whether it be the MLS or whether it be entrepreneurship. And I also want to find out a few of his entrepreneurship secrets. This podcast was a very enjoyable one, and I hope that you enjoyed too. This podcast was done over multiple days, so you'll definitely notice that if you're watching it on a video on YouTube, because you'll see that I move from outside to inside, but I try to make the content as cohesive as possible, so if you're listening to it on a podcast form, then I think you probably won't even notice. So, without further ado, let's get this thing started. Today, I'm on uh, I'm on a Zoom call with Michael Chabala. Uh, first of all, thank you for coming on, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, buddy. Nice being here. I did, of course. So tell me about yourself. I am a 36-year-old entrepreneur now, former uh, two-time Major League Soccer champion, um, economic uh, major graduate from the University of Washington, and I hail from the great state of California, Fresno, California, to be exact. Um, come from a loving family. Um, mother and father that are now separated but were great uh, parents raising me I spent my entire childhood chasing a soccer ball um, which took me around the world um, and through that experience um, you know playing I uh, found my true calling which I thought was to play soccer professionally which I did for almost 10 years in major league soccer for Houston, Portland, DC, but actually it was to connect people um, through fitness. And so my greatest strength um, as, a, as a human being has always been uh, connecting others. And, and so through that and my technical ability um, from playing professional soccer and through just the timing of boutique fitness and just the world um, has led me to create a company called sphere which at one, one, one point in time was a boutique fitness concept idea to compete with companies like barry's boot camp or soul cycle but now has become much more than that um and uh yeah we focus on just creating unique experiences uh for people um that are not necessarily soccer players but just those that are looking to connect and you know kind of change their own game so what would you say Sphere is all about? Is it all about, you know, um, I know you guys have like a club team. Is it all about, you know, connecting people through a teamwork or are you connecting them just through, you know, sports in general? Yeah. Um, so so like I said before, you know, Sphere was like, oh, soccer inspired fitness concept. And, you know, the idea yeah. was to create this lights down music up concept. But the most important thing that we do is to create a unique experience through these different workouts. I would, I would, I, I, my favorite part of professional soccer was the locker room and what I felt was missing in the fitness industry and in the world prior to COVID-19 was human connection. Um, and so I believe that a lot of uh, our interaction was through our device rather than, you know, sitting down and having a conversation face to face. Uh, and, you know, so I define sphere now as a, a business on connecting people through, you know, creating, creating that locker room, whether we're outside, whether we're inside and, and helping people, you know, find, find a way to, to play, to, to, to work out, but also to connect. Um, we do, oh, we do, uh, away games or retreats that we were starting to work on. And, you know, we do, you know, like most fitness companies, no shower, happy hours, where you go to a bar after you work out and just finding unique ways to bring people together. I don't think that we've scraped the surface on creating creating better experiences that are non uh, sport related because we've just been so hyper focused on really creating the concept of Sphere. Because um, within Sphere, there's many components. We have an outdoor business model. We have an indoor concept model. Um, we just launched our online platform, and um, wow. And we have uh, we have this unique 
aspect of our company that um, I think will will one day become a corporate benefit company, um, but but play a great game, and that is our mantra, if you will. You know, it's our style of play, and and that that idea I think is what is gravitating people towards our company, because the idea of like me telling you play a great game could mean many different things, and yeah. um, so it's our idea of trying to convince people that this is not a practice. Like this is your one game that you get and whatever you're doing, play a great game, no matter what it is. And I think that's getting people into this top of our sales funnel and working on their way into whatever area, whether they're in China or whether or not, excuse me, we have somebody in Russia that just signed up on our online platform. If you're wow. in Houston, Texas, you can only come to our indoor boutique fitness concept like Soul Cycle or Berries right now. And then we have a Zumba model like, uh, that's called club and you know people are doing that in tampa and austin and brooklyn now so you know it's just been it's taken five years now since i started the company to really identify all these different areas um and now working on really communicating that i mean again it just took me probably seven minutes to explain all this no dude it's a cool concept so you're saying that the people who join from like russia and all that stuff they're you know interacting with people you know in houston and all that yeah you know so the platform and the technology is not completely developed i think it's just the first stage um so they'll they'll take like peloton right you log in you yeah. sign up you take a class the the one area of human of interaction is through live streaming so we do actually um have that component to actually do the live stream um but we haven't we haven't we haven't launched that yet because nobody's been in our studio so once we start getting players back into our studio you'll be able to actually watch a live class but actually be participating so we'll have a first person camera so you're actually like in the class and being able to interact with people from wherever you're playing and i think that's going to be one of the things for us that will differentiate us between peloton is creating an atmosphere like creating an experience for people at home um you know creating this this lighting and sounds most people just work out outside or in a light yeah. bright room. everything for us is about creating this nightclub like experience so that's actually kind of our home game kit that we're creating right now and working on that's super interesting so are you guys trying i know i know you talked about this before you know with with social media it's pretty difficult to kind of get in um to get you know it's kind of difficult to get in touch with people without social media but you do recognize you know obviously that there are some sort of problems that come with social media in terms of like people are having trouble connecting with each other and all that stuff so how do you guys use social media to sort of, you know, get people on your side, but not take away the connection? Yeah. I mean, I still haven't figured it out because I mean, we only have 13 something thousand followers at the moment and myself included. Um, I think that good. everybody's, well, I mean, it's okay compared to other people. Right. But I, I mean, I think we've done a great job of, of communicating, you know, our team color pink. I think we've done a good job of, you know, communicating the fitness aspect of it and community but we haven't fully bridged that gap of really bringing the connection piece to it i mean live streams have been the best way for us to keep people connected um i guess i should give myself more credit than that right because the the play great game accounts we have two we have sphere and then we have our it's our style play account uh yes. and it's and so play a great game launched during the pandemic. And what we did was, so I always wanted to, to do a podcast. Uh, I always wanted to, so on the play a great game side was more of the heart and soul of our team with sphere. There's, I looked at it like ESPN, like there's always a new highlight from like our club or from sphere, the indoor model now Peloton model, our, our power platform, if you will, we have play a great game. You've got constant like all these different things that we're doing. So, so with sphere I was starting to just like really work on communicating what that was, but we were losing the actual human connection, the element of like personality and like the, the feel of what, like the pulse of our company and the people within it. Cause there's a lot of amazing human beings that are laced up and like representing our team. So play a great game has given us that ability to really dig into the heart and soul of our team. And so uh, one aspect of play a great game and uh, our website's about to launch, but I want to do a podcast and I want to be, I, I love Guy Raz. I love, you know, how I built this. I like the idea of sharing the story right with us. 
play a great game is mantra i like grant cardone 10x like there's something that yeah. you can grab onto right and it's very specific and so within within play a great game is like the idea of walk me through your game right like tell me exactly how you know you did it first give me your introduction before you take the field let's talk about it so kind of like walking walking someone through a game and you know there's a halftime there's a point in the game that something happened you got yellow card red card and it's like using the analogies of our our team soccer inspired but it's not necessarily soccer and then yeah. using that to kind of tell someone tell someone's story and like in our color in our way so we started doing these live interviews on monday with guys only we called it a pow hour and then <laughs> on like Wednesday, we started doing a girl power and it's led by one of our female coaches and so we would just start bringing on you know guys on Monday girls on Wednesday and we'd have a theme or we would try to bring in some unique players I think it was two parts growth hacking but also um, you know starting to share and get some ideas on like what this would even look like on Tuesday we created a practice so we just had people that were skilled so uh, whether you're a graphic designer and you were doing that somebody teaching us how to make a margarita from home started doing like a yoga practice how to DJ and then on Thursday, we would do a no shower happy hour, but it was digital. So everybody would just log in. We, we hired some guy from Disney World in Orlando who was doing like the piano guy where, where he would like, hey, tell me what song you want to hear. And, you know, he would just start playing. It was very interactive yeah. and fun. We had a comedian on. So we just started to be like really creative with the account and just engaging it. And, and, um, and that was fun. We, on Sunday, we did like a soulful Sunday where you know we would do like a little bit of meditation yoga intention practice so that was fun and then at halftime during the middle of the day just like you know life just like a soccer game there's always a point where you break you break it up right and so as a soccer player halftime was always a moment where it was inevitable it was going to happen and whether you yeah. played really well in the beginning in the morning you woke up early you kicked ass or whether you slept in, you were lazy, you were hungover, you didn't do anything. It's like, okay, there's a moment where I get to change. And so we started really focusing on this halftime segment uh, that I, I enjoy the most because sometimes people are dancing. Sometimes people are giving you the motivational pump up. Sometimes you got a professional athlete on there giving you like some real like in your face, hardcore, like let's go. Um, sometimes it's an interview. So you never know what you're gonna get at halftime because it's dictated by how you play. And so we've, we've added that. So it was a lot and we're scaling back now because we're taking the podcast live this month. The no shower happy hour component was to be live, like in person. So yeah. we're starting our outdoor classes again. So we're going to be going out to bars and supporting local businesses. But, um, but yeah, I mean, that, I mean, through that, and then obviously on our, our sphere account, we were doing live workouts every single day. We were doing two workouts a day. And, wow. um, you know, so we were offering a lot of free classes for, for everyone, you know, to be able to participate. And we started getting people from other parts of the world and, you know, the country to start joining us. Wow. So when, when you talk about, you know, the connection, how it's super important to you guys, and even in, even online, right, it's still insanely important. There was, um, there, there was a, a concept that I heard a while ago. It was like, you know, when you're playing soccer, you're watching any sport, if you're trying to pick out the best player, Right? You're trying to pick out the player that's not only a good player, but a team player. You want to see what happens when he scores. Because when he scores, you want to see whether or not he's celebrating by himself or he's celebrating with his team. Right? If he wants to you know, hug all of his brothers and things like that, or if he just kind of wants to you know, celebrate by himself and show that he's the man. So do you think that the people in, um, in Sphere really embrace that sort of like team mindset? Did you, did you actually notice that when you're in the MLS? right like did all your teammates sort of embrace that team mindset or was that sort of like hey, yeah I'm, I think I think it comes down to the individual I'd like to say that every every player I mean so, I mean soccer and soccer is a team sport within that team sport you have individual matchups and you have individuals that have personalities that are necessary for a team there's always a bad guy there's always a good guy there's always a team player there's a captain you've got to go like, and that's what makes up great teams, right? Is the different personalities. Um, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's natural. Well, successful teams, I believe you'll see a more cohesive team celebration that will bring people together or that are happy to celebrate someone else's success. And 
And then, I mean, I think it's just kind of rhetorical, right? But then I think on the alternative, you see somebody celebrating individually or whatnot, like, and that could dictate, you know, the rest of the team. Like, there's, there's nothing, you know, you see when somebody celebrates. I've, I've just seen both sides, right? Like, I've seen the guy go and go to the corner flag and do their own thing, and then nobody goes and supports them. Yeah. Right? But then you see, like, the whole team runs to go and celebrate. No. It's just, it's one of those things where it's, it's a team, you know, they're doing their job and, you know, you do your job, whether you're tired and you can't go down the field because you just like, you're trying to catch your breath. Um, but I think what you're getting after is the, the sportsmanship of buying into a team and, you know, being, being a part of something greater than yourself. And do you think I mean, it makes a big difference? What's that? Do you think it makes a huge difference, right? If you, if you sort of feel like you're in that like greater than yourself mentality, you're sort of yeah. I I, one, I mean, one of the little quotes I always have these like little spherical motivational quotes, but I change the words on it, right? But it, you know, I think that the um, the original quote is like, if you want to go, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Like I change <laughs> the wording to like, if you want to play fast, or uh, if you want to go fast, play alone if you want to go far play together and you know it's really a true statement and one of the biggest things i can't stress about our team and the concept of sphere is that we are truly team inspired there are a few pillars and rules to the company and i say celebrate the name on the front of your chest not the one on the back if you are not operating in that capacity then you cannot be on my team like i will not put up with that like it just won't work right so um within our locker room there's no such thing as a stranger like when you walk in that differentiates sphere from other fitness concepts is that we believe in an open locker room concept we do not have a front desk and there's an ipad and our coaches are going and directly introducing themselves and going to meet you before you even get on the field so imagine going to soul cycle and you've got somebody that's just like walks up to you like hey nick nice to meet you come over here by the way hey this is mike I don't know, you guys haven't met yet, though, but, like, hey, Nick's from Jersey, but Mike's also from New York, but actually, like, lived in Jersey for a little bit, too. Oh, no way. Like, we go, like, three steps further and to start building that relationship before you even get on the field. And so, yes, I, I do believe that that is super important, and I believe it creates a, 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 creates a, a winning formula. It's not, it's not the entire formula, but it definitely starts to bridge the same mentality for an organization for a company for a team to be successful and that is again team first um uh you know uh, approach wow so so actually what do you think is sort of the balance between you know you look at people like like jordan and like kobe and like all those people especially i know you have people like messi and ronaldo and those in the, in the soccer world and it's like you know those people work like so hard and they're sort of like people like you know um, carrying their team a little bit, you know, they're the captains. They're the ones scoring the goals, things like that. So right. what do you sort of find is sort of the difference between, like, passion, like, you know, putting, putting your all into the game? What's the difference between the passion and, and putting yourself into the game? Sorry, I wouldn't understand the last part of it. Yeah, it's more just, like, how do you balance it between, like, you know, feeling like, you know, I was the one who scored that goal. Like, that one's kind of all me. And, and also balancing it with, like, you know, I'm doing this for my team. Like, I'm, I'm focusing on what's in the front of the jersey. At the end of the day, you don't become a professional athlete by saying, I want to play for a team and help a team win a championship. You play because you want to make money. You play because you want to glorify your family. You play for the fans of the stadium. Like, each and every one of us, I believe, has, like, some type of, you know, confidence and and selfishness about us right that wants to like have glory or wants to have some fame or wants to do that I can't say that I've met a professional athlete that didn't want that right I mean not maybe yeah. to a certain extent right like you want to be a competitor you love playing like you love that I think that you know the the, the bridge between this the selflessness and selfishness just lies within I don't know I, I'm conflicted right because I, I do I do believe in like taking pride in, in in yourself and and you know your accomplishments but I think that there's a my mentality has always been team first I think that was actually one of 
my weaknesses, but it's also my greatest strength. Yeah, I how would it be a weakness? That... Pardon? Why would you say it was a weakness? I would say it's a weakness because of like my answer as to why it's a positive for being selfish. And it's because of regardless that you're sports is a business understanding that it's a business and it's no longer your recreational soccer league or you know uh everybody wins type of mentality and knowing the difference between the guy sitting next to me could be making 10x more than me like it could be significant but i could be doing all the work right and i could be happy making an average salary but this guy right here he's playing for his family at home. Like he's playing for, you know, putting food on the table. Like there's a different mentality to it. And I think that's just my own experience as a professional soccer player is I didn't have that killer mentality when I got to the professional level of understanding that this locker room of players, they are brothers, they are teammates, but you're worried about your own money, right? Like you got to be worried about performing and being successful and individually and then building the team and making the team better. I mean, and it depends on your role, right? Because, yeah. I mean, we're specifically probably talking to the attacking players on the team. I don't know a lot of defenders that are worried about scoring goals as much as maybe like PK or a few guys that are out there. It's just, it's a different mindset. I think that as a, as a striker, their job is to score goals. And if they're not, it's like, hey, you're, you're not doing your job. You're probably not going to be getting paid and you're not going to be <laughs> – you know, you know, your defenders aren't going to be happy with them because that's our job is to make sure that they do their, their they do their part. But I don't know. I yeah, well, like to it around it a little bit though. But I don't, hopefully that kind of gives a little bit of my perspective on it because I do believe that you know you you do take pride in scoring or do you do take pride in being like the guy? I think that's important, yeah. and I think it's important to have that guy on the team, right? That like has that confidence and swagger. Like if everybody was just kumbaya, put our arms around each other. I mean, it's kind of boring for sports, right? Like, everybody yeah. wants a Kobe and a Michael Jordan because, like, they're that confident that they want to take every single shot. But That's I think true. that there's a fine line between – not to say fine line, but there's a balance because they have to gain the respect and trust of the rest of the team that they're doing it for the great the, – like, the, 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 the whole rather than the individual. Yeah, it was super interesting. Like, Kobe, he talked about that a lot. He was like, when I came into the league – there were people that were insanely motivated and that were like really, you know, doing it because they love basketball or doing it because they love their families or whatever. But there were also people that came in and just kind of treated it like it was a nine to five, like it was a job. And they really didn't have that motivation, that passion to work hard. And stuff. So tell me, like, what, what was it like training for, training for the league? Kind of what was going through your mind? What was the reason why you wanted to do this? Was it more because you love soccer? Or was it more just because, you know, you wanted to treat your family well and things like that? Great question. And, um, I mean, Kobe's a go for a reason, right? I mean, True. it takes – you got to be crazy, man, to want to be a professional athlete. I mean, you obviously have to be talented, right? You've got to be gifted. I mean, athleticism is – acquired but it's also you know god-given right i mean you're your lebron james wasn't just like i'm gonna be seven foot tall six spot you know like I'm, you know like he didn't he didn't create that you know that was given to him um so those part those those parts are part of it like you take that to the side but the mentality to persevere through you know all the hardships the percentage of what it takes to like really get there you know, you just, you just have to be a little bit crazy. Um, I mean, for me, for me personally, I, I never treated like a nine to five because it was, it was a full time. It was, it was, it was my life. Right. And I think that's why a lot of guys, I mean, you just, it, it just consumes you. And um, I think that's just the difference for, I mean, I think it's easy to get to the top. It's harder to stay there. The ones that stay there, the ones that then, become a Kobe, become the Michael Jordan, become the LeBron James, become these guys that, you know, you look at and it's like, what's the difference between those? I mean, yeah, it's completely their mentality. It's the way that they like, they're constantly looking at their, their life as like, as like, how am I, you know, it's not just like I go to work and I come home. It's, it's nonstop. Right. And, uh, yeah. I mean, and Did you know me, that you were like that? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it was, it was never, there was never like, Oh, I'm going to turn this off. And I'm going to go do this now. And then I'm going to go back. I think 
I saw a little bit more of that from some guys as professional soccer players, but they also had families. They weren't making a lot of money and, you know, they just had other things that are going on, not like other yeah. jobs and stuff, but it was just like a different mentality from like family life. I mean, there is a, a part of like on the field, off the field, taking breaks and having fun and mixing that up. But for me, I mean, I wanted to, I wanted to become a professional soccer player because I wanted to prove people wrong. Like, don't get me wrong. I loved it and I was motivated by it and I wanted to be in it every single day, but I wanted to do it more so because I wanted to prove people wrong. I did. I, 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 I was fueled by negativity. I was fueled by the, the haters, the people on the sidelines saying that you couldn't do it. Um, I was fueled by ex-girlfriends and stuff, you know, they just like all the negative stuff like that gave me like, all right, let's go and do this. Um, Did you find that it worked, right? Because that was what fueled, that was what fueled Kobe. That's what fueled, you know, some of, some of the greatest players. Did you find that, you know, you'd rather focus on the negatives or the positive? Sounds terrible, but I focus. I mean, you know, I was feel. I mean, I was fueled by the negatives. Like I was, I was fueled by the. I was. I, that was. That, that's what. I mean, obviously, I had a God-given passion that was that I cannot ex des describe. Like I was like, oh, I kind of want to play soccer. Like, no, it, it has got to be an obsession. <laughs> it's, it has got. It's just something you can't describe. And I'm sure that all those athletes can probably say the same thing. There's just something different about it. The um, maybe not everybody. I mean, there's some guys that are just like naturally gifted, and it's just like, okay, I do this because I'm good at it, and that's what it is. Yeah. But I mean, I didn't have all those features. Uh, well, take, take me through like the training process, right? So how how long did you guys work out through the day? Like, how were you able to push through? Did you do it just because you liked it, or was there times where you were just like, you know what, I'm really not feeling this right now? Like, this is, this is going to be tough to dig in and go in for this fourth, fifth hour or whatever. And, you know, what was the thing that sort of pushed you through? Sort of yeah. Thing? Me, it was – when I got – so I, I traveled to Austria when I was eight years old, and I lived and played over there for two years um, with a professional team. I was scouted, and that's what separated my career. I, my world was opened up. My eyes were opened up to the world at eight, like almost seven – late, late – like, seven, yeah, almost eight, yeah. I was like seven and a half when I went eight. So I got to saw the, I saw the world and I was like, wow, like, this is awesome. Like I'm in yeah. Italy, I'm in Switzerland, I'm in uh, Belgium and Finland, Sweden, Denmark. I was in Vienna. I mean, I mean, I'm just, I'm traveling Europe at eight and I'm managing my own money. And I'm meeting new people. I'm speaking German. I'm playing for this first division team. I come home at 10. I'm like, Okay, wait, what's going on? Like, my parents are wonderful people, but I didn't come from a lot of money. And when I, I, I grew up really fast, I grew up really early. And when I could real, I, when I could identify and recognize that I didn't come from a lot of money, and that I realized that this was going to be my way out, that my parents were going to be able to pay for college, and that professional soccer was going to be my way of giving back to my family, that's, that's what really motivated me and that's what that's that's what was that's that's what that's what was my my why I think more than anything and I think just realizing that there was no alternative like it was I'm only going to play professional soccer there is no alternative if this doesn't work out I'm going to go to college if this doesn't work out I'm going to get this job with my family's company if this isn't like there was no alternative it was I'm only going to play professional soccer I'm going to get a full a full ride scholarship so my parents don't have to pay for it. I'm going to make a lot of money. I'm going to take care of my family. That's the way it's going to go. So that was wow. – that, and that's my way as an entrepreneur. I mean, like, my back's against the wall. Like, there is no – there's no there's no other job. Like, there's no – if this doesn't work out, I'm going to go into, like, coaching. If this doesn't work out, like, it's just, like, this is going to work. But it's going to be hard, and it's going to take a long time. But this is the way it's going to be. And I think that mentality – for me growing up was the difference because my back was against the wall and there was just only one way to go. And I would think that's for like the training purposes of what you're saying is when you, when you are, when you're that desperate and when you're that demented sounds bad, but like when you're that possessed, no, it makes sense. You, 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 you then step back and you have to have, Again, it's a combination, right? It's a combination of mentors, it's a combination of experiences, it's a combination of knowledge, and even at an early, earlier age, I mean, why am I get, why am I setting my alarm clock on Eastern Standard Time 
because I wanted to be the hardest working player in the country. That is because like I had heard from like a motivational speaker when I was like 13 about like how to separate them. Like, okay, well that makes sense. So like, what can I control? I can control this. I can control that. And I focus on things that I can control rather than things I couldn't control. So I always knew like, Hey, I want to be the best player in my hometown, best player in my state. How can I be the hardest working player? What things can I control? And so I started working on that and that was okay. Well, I heard a quote, you know, bent over, drenched in sweat at the point of exhaustion when nobody else is watching. I'm like, okay, well, that looks like this. So every time that I think that's what success is and that's what I need to go and do, oh, it doesn't matter when people are watching, it matters when people are watching. So I'm like, oh, well, nobody's up at 4.30. Like, oh, it's snowing? All right, I'm going for a five mile run. Oh, like it's Friday night, everybody's going out. Okay, I'm in the gym. So like every single time that there was an opportunity to, do, to be weird, to do something that was crazy, I'm like, sign me up, put me in. Like, that's where I'm gonna be. And I mean, and I just, and I just committed to sacrificing sacrificing all of that other um all that other like fun things that people enjoy doing you know in their childhood and i just made a commitment to doing one thing are you still like that as an entrepreneur do you feel like you know the passion that comes from soccer is also the same passion that comes from being an entrepreneur and growing your company and things like that i'm really critical there's no other person that's going to be harder on myself than me um again blessing and curse at the same time yeah, definitely. I I look at my career as a soccer player and then apply that to as an entrepreneur. And I'm I'm a really good freshman in high school right now. Like, there's a lot of opportunity. I might even be a sophomore now. And I say that with like as a business, I've acquired a lot of skills. I'm growing. There's a lot of people that are noticing me. I haven't got like to the college level yet, but like maybe I'm almost a junior and it looks like things are like going to look really good. Um, but I have a long ways to go. I feel like at 36 now, there's other things that are important in life, like having a family and things of that sort. So, um, another question that I had that was, that was super cool that I, I, you know, I, I find it so interesting. It's like, tell me about your, your career path and what you sort of did to get from, you know, being in Austria when you were younger to the MLS. You want to talk about the, the career path? Is that, was that what you said? Yeah. And going from... From when you were younger to getting to professional. From when I was younger to, to uh, pros? Yeah. Um, anything specifically about the path or just kind of in general? What did it take? Like what, 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 how much time did you have to put in, you yeah. know, who, who did you have to meet with, you know, things like that? Yeah. Um, you know, I think a lot of it, um, I mean, some people say like, there's no such thing as luck, right? Like you create your own, um, you know, I, I mean, I, there's, um, there's a really good book called the, uh, the third door and, um, you know, it talks about like anyways but the, the basic bottom line is like you know there's a fr front entrance there's a back entrance and then there's that like you know you got to go through like the side window to get in the back and then it like keeps yeah. like in, in there like one of the this this um guy that worked for um facebook i think it was but anyways he just talked about like success and um distracted for a second but um anyways it's like it's like you got to keep putting in the work every single day and luck is like a train like luck is this train and it keeps coming by and you keep going to the same train station every single day hoping it's going to be there but like if you don't put in the work and you don't show up every single day when that train comes by to pick you up and you're not there because you took the day off then you miss it right so I like the analogy of that. I just think it was, um, it, it made sense for me because, you know, being at the right place, at the right time in San Diego and that scout see me, um, I think just from like the, the, the teams and, you know, the, the people that helped me as far as like letting me drive with them in the car to pay for my meals, to let me stay on their couches. Um, I think that the, 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 my family's background to pushing me and, giving me the opportunities as far as like the actual work itself i mean 
I mean, I just didn't do anything else besides play soccer. I mean, that was that was it. I mean, that's actually not true. I I golfed. I played. I played every sport until sixth grade, seventh grade. I played a little bit of baseball and I played golf. And in eighth grade, I stopped everything except golf and and soccer. And then ninth was that in grade. Austria? No, I, no, I was back in the states at this time. At this point in time, oh. um, no, I, no, no, ninth, no. It was eighth grade, yeah. So I was in, I was in Austria when I was like fifth, fourth, fifth, sixth grade. Yeah, I was super young. Um, but I mean, I just as far as like the the, the the time and you know the energy. I mean, going back to like Mount level and like that ten thousand hours. I mean, I don't know how many hours I spent on it. I just know that I would, you know, I would train in the morning. Then I would do something in the afternoon. Then I'd have a practice in the evening. Um, you know, I journaled, so I'd have a I'd have a journal that was based around my goals, based around my training schedule. Uh, you know how I felt, how I played, personal. Was and your whole team like that, or was no, it just you no, 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 no? Like I mean, I was I wasn't surrounded by all like I was surrounded by you know like one person makes it from like a state you know like really yeah. like that's i mean there's i mean i think that the amount of guys that made it professionally from my year in major league soccer or maybe like four to six players wow. but from california that's we i mean california is known for like always producing more players because we have a better i guess pool of players there's more athleticism there's more technical better training and great weather so i just think the the, the chances are are just so small and there's just you know it's like you know it's like any anything in life man like you use a you know i don't know, I hate them a guy right but you go to the beach you're like all right where are all the hot girls at like it's like sometimes you know you go to the wrong beach it's like it's hard to find someone yeah. you know you know depending on where you go like um so it's just like it's hard to find really good soccer players it's hard to find good com- competitors people to play with and it seems like it's super, you know, difficult to get there. And, you know, like you said, only one person gets up there. But it clearly wasn't like an accident, right? Like, no, you were no. there for a reason. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's, just a, it's, a, it's a perfect storm. I mean, I, you know, if, if I was, you know, if one day to become a father, yeah, I could train my son. I could, I could, you know, give him the best lessons and put him through the best training. But, it, you know, it, like what is he what he or she watching you know what like what like who are they surrounded by like what is their upbringing and you know what other things catch their interest and then do they catch the passion of wanting to do it right because yeah. you telling somebody to do something and somebody wanting to do it are two completely different things so you know and then it's just, it's just timing and you know is soccer relevant are there other sports and athletes that catch a child's attention and then on top of that like you know, where are you living? Do they have the ability? And you're talking about the team and the players that they're around and the kids that they associate with. So, I mean, there's just so many things that, that it's like, a, I mean, literally it's like a soccer ball, right? Like everybody touches the ball, but it affects the game, right? Like you yeah. might touch the ball one time and it could just, it'll throw everything off just like life. Uh, and so I did everything in my power to control what I could control based off of like working really hard, focusing on, you know, training what and in the best capacity that I knew. And I just, I would constantly try and one up every training session. So I just would never, I would always write down my workouts because it always held me accountable and I'd write everything down. And then at every workout, I would always do fitness at the end. I would do something to challenge myself. I would always measure how fit I was by juggling the ball. You know, it's just, it's a really good indication of how fit you are because you have to focus when you, when you get tired, you lose focus, which then turns into a mistake in a game. So you have to do this juggling exercise. And if I messed up, I would do everything all over again. I mean, there's times I'd be out there like three, four hours because, you know, I would do this stupid fitness testing and I would, you know, grab the ball and I'd go and I'd be like, <laughs> but I mean, well, that- if, if I just, if I just, if I, oh, it's okay. Like, I'll snooze. Uh, I'll get to that tomorrow, right? Like that's what most people do in life is they just make an excuse for themselves and just say, "I'll do it another time." Like we'll work that out later. And that's why something I just never, I never let 
happen. And so through all the training, through all through all my my years and all the things that have happened, there's just different phases of 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 my career, my 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 youth. And it was always a combination of challenging circumstances and constantly wanting to be the best on every team and competing and knowing that like I had to be the best player on that team. Like I had to be the best in every fitness drill, but it was also coaches telling me, Hey, you need to be the fittest player on your team. Like that's something you control by. Okay. Then like, I just knew like, that's what I needed to do. Or, Hey, if you want to make it pro, like you, there's only one person that's going to make it pro from this team. Like who's going to be on my boss? So I got to be the best player on the team. And I just had like a, a different mentality. I think because I traveled at such an earlier age, I just had this, chip on my shoulder I had this I what's the word I'm looking for I just I just had like a swagger and I had a, a competitive advantage over other kids that maybe didn't know her or whatever well, I mean so there are a lot of kids like especially like in Jersey and basketball like we'll talk about it and they'll just be like insanely talented just you know a lot more talented than the rest but they just yeah. don't want to work for it right exactly. exactly so the thing is like do do you really do you think it was the the stuff in Austria and that was the thing that really pushed you to succeed or was it some sort of like eventual goal that you were really looking for? Uh, I, no, I think when I was um when I was like thirteen, fourteen, that's when I really committed to becoming a professional. And I, again, like you know, you don't know what you don't know, and unless you're surrounded by others that are above you. I mean, you know, you read about something or you listen to a podcast and success leaves clues. You can, you can, until you actually hear it or you see it or you taste it, it's then where you like believe it. But again, going back to the, the destiny of like deciding what a goal is and what you're going to work towards and then going out and setting out to do it. And that's, that's when I really set out to go become a professional soccer player was when I was in Idaho, Boise, Idaho at a, a regional ODP camp. And that's like, that's when I, that's when I went to work. That's like when I remember being in this auditorium with all these, these kids from all over the West coast. And there were this, this guy and he was talking about Atlanta Donovan being in the same seats that we were. And it's just like, look, like you just got to make a decision. Like, what do you want to do? And I just like, I'm, I'm committing like right here. And at that moment, that's when I, that's when I, that's when I just like, I was old enough, you know, you say as a little kid, like, I want to be a doctor and I want to go to the moon or I want to be the president or I want to play pro soccer, but you just say it because it's like what you say yeah. to like sound cool, but like cognizantly like making a decision and understanding the magnitude of that decision and having the, just having the discipline to follow through with such a, uh, an enormous statement, you know, I think is, um, is probably one of the, it was a pivotal shift or moment and where I said, okay, like this is what I have to go and do now. And then from there, it was just being hungry and searching for information that could help me get to that point. And, and then along the way is just getting help, like getting help from coaches, getting help from my family, getting help from, you know, friends, people that would help in just many different ways. And again, it was like, I just, I can't stress the serendipitous, like lucky, uh, like timing of things. I mean, I didn't even know what, like, I mean, yeah, I was a highly recruited uh, collegiate athlete, but I had like a friend, this chick that played soccer and her dad was a lawyer. And he's like, Mike, like, what are you doing to get recruited? And I was like, I don't know. People just come to you. Right. He's like, no, it's like internet's not really that prevalent. Like people know kind of like lists, 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 but you gotta like reach out to people. So, I mean, this guy, literally, I never even really hung out, met him, I wasn't friends with his daughter, but, like, took me into his office, and he's, like, scripting my, you know, these these letters to send out to college coaches, like, 150, 200 coaches all over the country. Wow. I didn't know anything to this guy. Like, this guy, this guy was, I mean, I mean, he just took an interest. He was like, dude, you, you, you need to do this. And, I mean, based off of that, like, that at least opened me up to the rest of the country to be like, maybe I've never heard about me, but now they did, and now they're watching me. It's just little things like that and was that the thing like, that got you like you know your opportunities and all that sending out those letters um no i mean i, I mean i think my 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 career 
or did that in, its, in itself, but I, it, it helped, right? It just, yeah. it just helped. Like it just, it just helped take me to the, to the next level or like gave me that extra boost of giving me more options. Um, did you ever have a time when you know. like, you know, when you were working super hard and, you know, you, you really committed to becoming a professional player. Did you ever have a time where you were like, maybe this isn't for me. Like, maybe I, I think I'm going to quit. Even like while you were professional, you're just like, you know what, I'm done with this. Like it's, it's kind of tough and I might want to stop. No, no. Never. Wow. Never had a moment, man. Yeah, never awesome. had a moment where I, yeah. Yeah, there was never a moment that, because people would always say that to me, like, don't, you know, players get burnt out and, you know, it's, it's you know, it's not about, because I could get disappointed, right? Like, I wouldn't make, I never made a youth national team. Like, I went to all these camps and I never got, I never was, like, the top 20. Like, I was, like, top 40, but I was never, like, the top 20 that was, like, recognize as like dude you are one of the best players in the country you're like i was on like a weird year because u.s national teams they they rotate off like an odd year or some even number so it's just weird the way it works like 83 85 87 it's like just what for whatever the, they their cycles right like they don't do every single age group like it alternates and i was in like that odd cycle anyway so i mean i was just like with Landon donovan's group and it was just like a weird 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 number but i just got to a point where i was like okay well Fuck it. Like, I mean, but somebody said, look, it, like, would you rather make it as a professional now or would you rather make it as a professional in 10 years? I'm like, I'd rather make it in 10 years. And funny enough, all those guys that made it then didn't make it later. Like, all Why the not? guys that were on that team. Yeah, what I happened? Mean, like, you know, a few of them did. Like, uh, from that, from that youth national team, from those those camps, I want to say maybe like three or four of them maybe made it. Um, and to be honest, with you, like a couple of people died in car accidents. Um, I mean, I'm not saying tragic, but like life. Like some people got burnt out. Some people got married, got a girl pregnant. Um, just, just did like just stop training because they got complacent. Um, yeah just, I mean, just life man so you but, were saying you're like it it really fueled you like all the haters and stuff like that was that one of those moments where you kind of like bounce yeah. back from not getting accepted from the team yeah yeah, yeah because, because you get you, i mean I'm, this is me personally but you've got to have you've got to have like you've got to have that that i'll say that kryptonite but like you've got to have that that extra fuel source that like you know, you, you get, you got to get yourself to like, you know, outer space. I mean, there's something that takes you so far and then you deplete it. It's like, okay, well, like what's next? Like, oh shit, this girl cheated on me. Okay. You're going to remember my name for the rest of your life in high school. Like that fueled me, right? Like, you know, another girl breaks up with me and say, like, okay, no, like I don't make, I don't make a team. Like coach cuts to, you. I mean, it's just you know, that, that, I mean, for me, that was always, that was always the X factor was it was the negative. It was always, it was always the, it was always the extra. Like I was given the, the passion, the desire, you know, but there was always those moments of people that would say something or that would influence the, or, you know, not influence, but just add to the tank. And that's definitely what, what I would, what I would say what helped me put in the extra hours. Like I can't tell you how many hours I put in. I just know that it was, far more than any other player like because i just made it a point like i just made i i purposely wanted people to think i was crazy like i i mean my parents always said when i was in kindergarten i'd get in fights with people over a soccer ball so like i don't know i remember i just know i was crazy about it but when i got to a point where i really understood you know like the, the more that people would look at me and be like dude like stew's nuts like i'd like it fed my ego like i was like yeah i am i am fucking crazy you're right. Like, see what else I'm going to, you know, and I just, I just kept, I kept eating into that. It's like, okay. And I mean, I just, I just kept like the, the harder I could work, the more I could do, you know, the, the, the more fuel it gave me, but it also just gave me confidence. 
and um, you know, just kind of just investing in myself. That's but, awesome, man. Yeah. So uh, uh, one final question, because I want to be, uh, you know, cognizant of your time. Um, so what do you what do you recommend for young people who really want to you know find their thing find their drive and they kind of know what they want to do what do you suggest for them to to go and be able to pursue it like what do they need what tools do they need to be able to go and get it for them to go and drive and and do something that they want to do like not soccer but just in general in general yeah You gotta, you got, you can't have an ego, and you gotta be humble in taking criticism and advice, and even if you don't agree with it, and you gotta be willing to, you know, subject yourself to uncomfortable situations that make you uncomfortable. Like you gotta be willing to. I mean, just purely like sacrifice, right? Like say like, oh, I'm going to sacrifice turning off the TV for 30 minutes every night to read. No, fucking throw the TV away and don't fucking watch TV for 30 years. Like that's, that's sacrifice. Like I gave up sweets. I gave up soda. I gave up fast food in high school. I was like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing this. Like I'm not doing this for like a maybe. I'm doing this because I'm going to make it fucking happen. You talk about sacrifice and you talk about that next level, like that's that's the type of uh, of of commitment um, that you gotta like be willing to 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 subject yourself to. I think that's probably what I would leave it with is just it's easy to say, I'll do that, I'll do this, but you can just tell a lot by someone's habits, right? So I don't know, man. Having a tour is really important. So I think finding someone that's already done what you want to do and put yourself out there, you know, to just constantly be doing things for free to just learn and uh, and and not be and not be uh, and not be afraid to to roll up your sleeves and work hard, right? You gotta like pay your dues and be able to invest in yourself keep doing that it's just so just so much right like it's just it's so easy to see everybody become an entrepreneur or become successful and all of a sudden you're flying around on jets or doing all the cool stuff that everybody wants to do like of course that's awesome but it's not reality it's not realistic um when you're first starting and that's where i think a lot of people get caught up is don't get me wrong like all those things are super important and they definitely fuel the fire but it's not um it's not going to be the difference right for a lot of people they're going to have to like there's just like there's a lot of bad that comes with it that people don't see and are not oh, definitely only bad but just there's a lot of hard work that that is not necessarily attractive definitely man uh, all right all right so yeah just tell everybody just just to close it out tell everybody where to follow you instagram twitter all that stuff and uh tell them why they should join sphere yeah, man. Uh, Mike Chabala at Mike Chabala at Sphere.club. Uh, man, Sphere.club on the, on the URL. But, um, you know, if you're looking for a game-changing fitness concepts, if you're looking for, uh, you know, some advice, entrepreneurship, business, uh, your guy, man. But, yeah, appreciate you having me on. Thanks for the, uh, the time. I'm excited to uh, keep kicking the ball around with you, man. Excited to work together. All right, awesome. Yeah, thank you, man. Take care.